the one and only Mr. Michael Ian Black. Yes. Hello. 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 How are you, Michael? I, I'm. I am blown away by the traffic report. <laughs> Just watching you do it live to me is unbelievable. Just a string of words just yes. blazing out of your mouth. Just words, 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 words. You say them with such confidence. Even though you're reading it, you're clearly reading it from a screen. Yes. You have all the information in front of you. Yeah. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> well, thank you. You will be amazed at how many people, I mean, and we're talking top level actors and directors, sit there in awe of Kathy's traffic abilities. It's amazing even to see that. Yeah, even politicians have, have, have commented on that and your screen over there by the way i couldn't do it it's not all verbatim she she kind of uh it yeah, just gives just basic information much of it is wildly inaccurate but it no. does present nice yeah. oh i never find traffic reports <laughs> accurate at all you want to try it do you want to go I, over to uh, yes uh, you, do you really okay, pull up a screen okay yeah. go over there I, to I, kathy's i, I think he, right. michael impresses me as someone with a with a very competent well, ability so you're just going from here to where all the way down well, Did you no, I don't, all of that? I don't she go, picks out. Yeah, like I'll pick out. I don't do everything, and well, I don't. Do I don't you go in which. To, <laughs> <laughs> how do you know? Like, how do you even prioritize Pennsylvania Turnpike? What WB? What does that mean? Oh, westbound. westbound. Okay. Pennsylvania Turnpike, westbound, west of Willow Grove. Uh, that's exit four, uh, 343 to Fort Washington. Backed up 12 minutes. Uh, the, 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 I can't do it. <laughs> He's, He's gone. gone. He's out. It, I'm just staring at it. <laughs> where, where? This one? Yeah. Uh, over on the Vine Street Expressway, I-676, westbound between I-95 and Broad Street, an accident that is that has been cleared away. Uh, we did have a two-minute delay, so uh, you might want to uh, watch out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Was not bad. That was not oh bad. God, the amount I, of panic I felt in that moment. It's pretty the stress good. stress of that. How long did it take you to learn how to do that? Uh, you know learning? what? My yeah, still learning. <laughs> the first time I ever did it, I was on TV, and it was probably the worst experience I ever had. All right, I that had, makes me feel better yeah. that you're just not a natural at it. I had the uh, the weather guy at the time over at the station I was working for called me afterwards and he was like, look. You're through in this business. <laughs> no, he said, he goes, it happens to all of us. Get past it and make sure your next one is better. And and I did and it helped because I was mortified. Fortunately, oh. it was four o'clock in the morning. Right. But still, I was Well, mortified. that's the time to train. <laughs> four o'clock in the yeah. morning. Right. right. Clearly. <laughs> right. You know what always amazes me though with that skill set is, is the, uh, the, the people uh, who do the weather reports and have just the green screen and are pointing at things? I, I could not do that. I have no. But there's a logic ability. to that that yeah. there isn't to the trap. The, the, if you can see the weather uh, just to the side on the monitor, yeah. and you're a trained meteorologist, <laughs> you can understand that certain symbols mean certain things. But if you're just looking at a string of words like you are, somehow you have to make sense of that and assimilate it on the spot. Look. What I do is brilliant. Let's not <laughs> let's no, not right. mince words. It's true. What I do is genius on a level that you can only imagine. But right. what you do <laughs> is a skill that probably anybody can. You know what, Michael? Yeah. You know what? <laughs> the you. worst part. In a way, it. that was a very touching compliment. Yeah. It was that compliment? Yeah. <laughs> the worst part about traffic is when you're waiting to hear the traffic uh, and you're waiting to hear the road that right. you're that you have to either avoid or get on. And, and then, then you space out, you know, and you're like, oh, my God. You missed it. What did she just say? She just said <laughs> she my just road, said and it. I wasn't paying attention. You know? That happens with me with the weather report. The oh. one day that I'm looking to have uh, the information for is the day I invariably glaze over and don't listen to. Right. Well, you know... Uh there exists now, or maybe it's just coming online, technology <laughs> where you can plug uh, what you want into, uh, apparently it's your telephone, exactly but, right. and, and then the, it will actually tell you what the weather forecast is going to be. And if you miss it, you can you can do it again. We are creatures of habit. And, you know, and so we, we end up like, like uh, you, 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 you default back to a kid waiting to see if your school is closed. That's and, right. Yeah, 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 so. right. Well, Michael, you know, uh, do you live in Los Angeles? I live California? in the Connecticut section oh, of Los do, Angeles. Oh, you do? Exactly. Connecticut is a little further east. A little, yeah. So yeah. very it's east LA. Further, <laughs> furthest most eastern town or state in California. I, I, well, I was, let me ask you then. Uh, how did Michael Ian Black, you know, little Michael Ian Black, who was growing up on the shores of Connecticut, California, <laughs> how did you, um, how did you end up in, in entertainment? What was the the path that that led you there? Uh, I, as a very young person, I was nine years old, and I was sent away to summer camp. And I did a play there. I don't know why. I think because there was a girl I had a crush on of who was doing what, the play. Yes. What camp so, were you at? Tecumseh? Uh, it was not called Tecumseh. It was called Camp Najiwa. Okay. A Jewish camp with okay. an Indian name. 
And uh, that's what is so unique. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that it has a better Jewish. ring than like Camp Comanche you know, Shivowitz or something. It's just <laughs> Camp Shivowitz. <laughs> and, well, it's a joke because that's where the Indians send their kids. Yeah. <laughs> Camp Cavell. <laughs> uh, and, and then I did it. And then I came home that summer and I was like, I was like, Mom, I'm, you know, I'm going to be an actor. Yeah. And then. You know, she was like, whatever, because I was nine. But then but then I just I never wavered from that. So I'm I'm now living the life uh, choices made by somebody who could not tie his own shoes. But it's interesting because you you have you have uh, you're a writer, you're a performer, you've directed. Um, you have the these sort of things that uh, present themselves to you. Like I, I my focus was originally going to be you know, television and, and try to do the Radio came along. I'm like, oh, this is what I've been looking for. This mm-hmm. is, is great. But I think the, the thing that I, I've found with many people is that, and we've said it time and time again on the show, at a certain point, you say, am I going to do this? And then you, like, eliminate safety nets and right. just go for it. Well, I never gave myself the safety net to begin with. Okay. I never, I, and, you know, I think most parents encourage their kids to, you know, get a degree in something or <laughs> have some kind of backup plan. And I knew that if I did that, it would be too easy to do the backup plan and not do the thing that I wanted to do. So my feeling is that (laughs) when I started the, the, everybody said, Oh, you know, show business seemed like an impossible way to make a living. I didn't know anybody in show business. Nobody in my family was it. It just didn't, it seemed so remote, but crazily enough, as I've gotten older and into the business economy has changed, yeah. people in creative professions in a strange way have an advantage because we're used to hustling. We're used to uh, doing stuff. And these jobs, at least so far, can't be outsourced. So in a weird way, like my profession is more stable than the professions that were stable when I was a kid. It's, it's more merit-based. It's more – yeah. You're, you, uh, well, that makes in, sense. in my case, not so much merit. It's just the fact that I'm gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's I mean, I guess that's merit in its own gorgeous. way. Yeah, but I'm just gorgeous. I, uh, so I've just been very fortunate. Just just in terms of my cheekbones, I've been oh my very God. fortunate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>